good morning students and welcome to today's class so in the last class we completed the chapter multiplication correct so we learned all about multiplication in the last class uh, in the previous chapter so in today's class we'll be starting with a new chapter called lines and shapes okay so maths is not only about numbers right so we also study about shapes and patterns and all that in maths so the branch of maths which covers shapes patterns is called as geometry okay it is called as geometry so here we will be studying all about lines and shapes and i'll teach you a few basics of geometry today okay so what are the different kinds of shapes you'll have learned so far you will know what is a triangle what is a circle what is a rectangle what is a square correct so these are all called as plane figures or plane shapes which have sides and vertices right so a triangle has three sides and three vertices a square has four sides and four vertices a rectangle also has four sides and four vertices but a circle has no sides and no vertices correct now if you see a triangle and a circle a triangle is made up of straight lines but a circle is made of a curved line correct so in today's class we will learn what are lines what are the different types of lines okay and what are the different types of straight lines also all right so let's start with today's class so now first we'll do the warm up question which is there in your textbook on page 130 it okay so here we have told draw and color the picture of a house or any other object using the following shapes or squ uh, shapes squares rectangle triangle circle or oval how many uh, you may use any number of given shape use the same color for the same shape okay so they've told you to form a house or any other object using the given shapes that is square rectangle triangle circle and oval okay so they have also told you may use any number of shapes but you have to use the same color for the same shape so if you are doing three triangles all the three triangles should be of the same color okay so let's uh, try to draw a house now first we'll draw and then you can color so okay so then you can draw a triangle to make the roof correct you can use a triangle to make the roof okay so then again you can use a triangle here to make this Oh, sorry, a rectangle, right? So then you can also use a circle or an oval here, and you can use a rectangle to make a door. Correct. So this is the door. Then you can use an oval to make a a uh, handle here at the door. correct and you can uh, add windows using squares so we will add some windows here so one then two windows so how many uh, shapes we used here now here we used one rectangle two circle one circle one oval and we have used so many rectangles correct so now just color your house such that how many of the triangles you draw they all should be of the same color all the rectangles should be of the same color the square should be of the same color and the circle and the oval should be of the same color it's not necessary you have to draw a house like how i have drawn drawn only you can use your uh, own imagination and draw any kind of house you want but they should have 
all the shapes mentioned that is square triangle rectangle circle and oval okay now let's continue we'll learn what is i will see a few basics of geometry now so basic geometry so first we'll study what is a point what is a point a point gives you a position okay a point gives a position now if you take a sharp pencil okay and mark a dot on the sheet of a paper okay you will mark a dot on the sheet of the paper that dot what you have marked okay that dot that you get is called a point okay it is called a point and it is named by a capital letter okay it is named by any capital letter so here they have named it as p so p here is a point and a point gives you a position now this dot over here represents this position okay this position so we'll see where points are used okay so this was the first basic that is point now we have something called a line segment so what is a line segment now here we did one dot on a paper correct now we'll make two dots on a paper okay we'll make two points not dots we'll make two points here like this one two so now we made two points you can name these two points what can you name you can name them any letters okay so i'm naming it a and b so i'll name them as a and b now what you do you draw a line or you join these two points okay it should be a straight line now when i join these two points this is called as a line segment okay so now what you get is called as a line segment this a b is called as the line segment and this line segment is represented like this so you'll write a b and you'll draw a line like this on a b so this represent line segment a b this is how you denote the line segment a b okay so a line segment has two end points so what are the two end points here a and b so you can measure the length which is the distance between the two end points so you can measure the length here say this is 3 cm okay i am just approximately telling it is not 3 cm but i am just telling if it is 3 cm so you can the distance between a and point a and point b will be 3 cm so what's a line segment it is a, a line segment has two end points you can measure its length okay which is the distance between the two end points so what is a point a point gives us a position and line segment you get when you join two end points and you can measure the length in or the distance between the two end points and it is called as a line segment then we have something called a ray okay in a ray we have one point okay we have one point so we'll name this point as c okay and then we'll draw a line from this point okay we'll draw a line from this point but we don't have another point so there is no end point here okay so this line continues when i draw a line like this or when i draw a arrow mark like this it shows that this line can continue further okay so on this uh, line that i have drawn i can draw one any point on this and i have named it d or the line segment cd in the figure is extended beyond d okay i can extend this point beyond d this d is not exactly a point i have just named it here okay you can extend it beyond d to any length okay so this is called a ray okay it is called ray cd okay observe the arrow at one end it indicates that the ray can be extended to any length so whenever they have given you an arrow it means that it is an ray and it can be extended to any length so a ray has one end point and you cannot measure its length okay you have only one end point in, in a ray and you cannot measure the length of a ray but in our line segment we have two end points and you can also measure the length of the line segment but in a ray you have only one end point and you cannot measure the length of the ray okay and 
ray is denoted like this. So we have drawn the ray CD. So we'll write CD like this and then draw an arrow mark on the top. Now you have to be careful when you're denoting it. Okay. So we have CD here. So it means that the point is extending after D. But if you write it as DC, okay, and draw a arrow mark like this, it will mean that here the line is extending after C. Okay, but our C is an end point, so it cannot extend. D only has to extend. So D should come later and C should come first. Here, CD represents that C is the end point and the line is extending after D. Here, DC represents D is the end point and the line is extending after D. C. So for what ray we have drawn, this is wrong and this is correct. Okay, so we have to write it as ray CD. This is read as ray CD. Okay, so I hope you understood what is a ray. Now we'll study what is a line. So in uh, in now in a line, a line has no endpoints, so it can extend beyond both the direction. Extend extend in both the direction so in this figure line ef is extended in both the direction now it is called as line ef when you have a line segment and you're extending it on both the sides then it is called as the line okay so the arrow at both the ends indicate that the line can be extended to any length on both the sides okay so i draw a line like this and if i draw two arrow marks like this at both the ends it means the line can be extended on both the sides. So what is a line? A line has no end points. We cannot measure its length. Okay, you cannot measure a length of a line. But you can measure the length of a line segment. So line is denoted using, uh, you can denote a line like this. So they have taken E and F, correct? So E, F. So you draw a arrow mark, uh, you draw a line with arrow mark on both the sides. So this represents line EF. So when you are reading this uh, symbol or the denoted name, you read it as line EF. Okay, so this is how it is denoted. So what all we learned now, we saw what's a point. A point shows a position. We saw what's a line segment. A line has A line segment has two end points. And you can measure the length of a line segment. Then we saw what is a ray. A ray has only one end point and it can extend in the other direction. It has We cannot measure its length. And then we saw what's a line. A line has no end point and we cannot measure its length. Correct. And we saw how to denote a point, a ray, a line segment and a line. Alright. I hope you have understood so much. Now we will study what are types of lines so lines can be either straight or curved so if you take a square a square has four lines a straight lines and a circle has one curved line correct so if you stretch a rubber band across your thumb and forefinger you will get straight line so when you keep a rubber band as it is then it is a curved line but when you uh, pull a rubber band or stretch a rubber band across your fingers then you will get straight lines okay and a rubber band held loosely represents a curved line so here the first figure this first line this shows a straight line this shows a curved line okay and this one has both straight and curved so this is straight then this is curved and this is straight again Okay, so these are the types of lines, straight lines and curved lines. Okay, now we have types of straight lines. So what are the different types of straight line? Straight line can be horizontal, vertical or slanting. Okay, horizontal, vertical or slanting. So what are horizontal lines? Horizontal lines are also called as sleeping lines. So the lines you draw like this are called as horizontal lines okay so these are horizontal lines or sleeping lines and what are vertical lines vertical lines are standing lines so this is a 
vertical line okay vertical lines are standing lines then lines that are neither horizontal nor slanting uh, nor vertical are called as slanting so the lines which are not horizontal or vertical are called as slanting so this is a slanting line this is a slanting line then this is a slanting line okay these are all slanting lines <coughs> all right so these are the three different kinds of lines so here line pq is horizontal line rs is vertical and line lm is slanting okay so these were types of straight lines now let's solve the questions that are there in your textbook exercise 5.1 in your uh, textbook page number 141 okay so they have asked mark s for figures with only straight lines okay c for figures with only curved lines and b for figures having both straight and curved paths okay so here they have told uh, they have given some images okay they have given you some photos or some figures and here you have to write if those uh, figures have straight lines or curved lines or both uh, both straight and curved so if it has straight lines you have to write s if it has curved lines you have to write c and if it has both straight and curved then you have to write b okay so first here this is a pumpkin now this pumpkin has straight lines curved lines or both if you see this pumpkin you will see that it has only curved lines correct it doesn't have any straight lines so we'll represent this by c okay then this eraser and if this eraser has straight or curved or both and if you see the eraser we have only uh, all straight lines so we'll denote it by s okay so we'll write mark it with s now what about this lotus flower this flower has all curved lines so we'll write c here okay and what about this fish now are there any straight lines on the fish no all are curved so we'll write c again then what about the watermelon and if you see the top part of the watermelon has a straight line and then this has a curve so it has both straight and curved so this is b then this is a milestone milestone means it shows you distance so it has both straight and curved so these are straight lines and this part the red color part represents the curved line so this is also b it has both and what about this arrow this arrow again has both now so if you see the pointed end of the arrow the triangular part it has two straight lines and rest all are curved lines so this is also b now what about these gifts are straight lines or curved lines now if you see the gift box have all straight lines correct so this is uh, s sorry then what about this uh, water surface of water they are all curved lines so this is c now what about this star now this star has all curved lines so this is c and this pot now this point pot also has all curved lines so this is c and what about the scale the scale has straight lines so this is s okay so copy this down then mark l for line r for ray and s for line segment so they have given you some lines here or some questions you have to see which are lines which are rays which are line segments for line you have to mark it with l for ray with r and for line segment with s so first one ab what is it now ab has two arrows at both the ends it means it can extend on both the sides so it is a line so we'll mark it with L. and what about pq now pq has two end points correct p and q are the two end points that cannot extend in any other direction so it is a line segment so we will represent it with s then x and y x has one arrow at the at y so it is a ray correct it has one end point and other side it is extending so it's a ray so we represent it by r then question number 
study these figures identify at least two different line segments of each type okay so we have to write at least two line segments for each that is one for horizontal uh, two for horizontal two for vertical and two for slanting now in the first figure is there any horizontal line segment yes we have m n over here which is a horizontal line segment and what in what about the second uh, shape is there any horizontal line segment yes we have ab which is an horizontal line and what about vertical in the first one lm is vertical and in the second one in the second one we have two ae is vertical and bc is also vertical so you can write any one among that i'll write b and c bc and then slanting with uh, first one is there a slanting line yes we have l and n which is slanting and in the next one we have two ed or de and dc so we'll write d e as a slanting line segment okay so that was question number 3 now question number 4 okay question 4 they've told uh dots on the grids using straight lines or curved lines to form shapes of choice so you can use these dots or these grids to uh, and uh, you can use straight lines okay so you, uh, or curved lines join these dots and make any shape or form shape of your choice so you can make a rectangle you can make a square you can make a triangle any shape you want you can make by joining these dots so you can either use straight lines or you can use curved lines okay so do question 4 for homework okay join the dots and make shapes okay we'll continue with next in the next class with closed and open figures all right thank you students